What does civilization mean to you? To me, the most essential part of civilization is shelter. Yes, YouTube comes a close second, of course. But on top of the list, I want to have a safe, dry, warm place to live. And it's not just me. Residential heating plays a special role in people's lives in countries where temperatures outside frequently get a little uncomfortable. But most buildings are currently heated with gas and oil. Globally, the carbon dioxide emissions from residential heating make up 10 to 12 percent or so, though they strongly depend on the season. This is why a lot of governments have pushed their people to install heat pumps. At least where I live, those have not been particularly popular so far. But this might change soon because a major upgrade to the technology is now hitting the market and it's really good news. Let's have a look. A heat pump is basically a type of electric heating. It uses electricity to move heat from one place to another against the direction the heat it naturally flow. Your freezer, for example, also uses a type of heat pump. It pumps warm air out of the pizza and into your room. And an air conditioner is also a heat pump. It pumps warm air out of your room and into your neighbor's garden. Heating with a heat pump works the same way, but in the other direction. It pumps heat into your house by making the outside cold colder. Or maybe one could say that it pumps cold out of your house. Guys, I've now been thinking about this sentence for a full hour. Does it make sense to speak of moving around cold as the negative of moving around heat? Please chime in below. There are three major types of heat pumps. The simplest one uses air from next to the house. But you can also use a water reservoir if you have one or air from deeper underground. This has the advantage that the temperature is usually more stable down there, but it requires drilling. Either way, you can use the heat pumps to warm up the air in your house or the water that you use for heating. What's the point? The point is that a heat pump is very energy efficient, basically because it just just sorts heat rather than creating it. Exactly how much carbon dioxide is released in the operation of a heat pump depends on how you power it. But if you go by energy, it's half to a third of a typical fossil fuel heating. That's why most countries have pushed house owners to install heat pumps. And that partly worked. Heat pumps are on the rise internationally and in some countries it's been going well. Sweden, Norway and Finland lead the way in adoption with 40% of households using heat pumps already and in the United States it's about 15%. But in other countries the uptake has been very slow. In Europe we have the UK at the bottom of the list with less than 1% and Germany isn't doing much better with about 2%. The problem with heat pumps is that they have limits below what some of us are used to from civilization and that makes us uncomfortable. Why is that? Well, you've probably noticed that no matter how long you run your freezer, it doesn't reach a temperature of absolute zero. That's because your freezer isn't entirely airtight, because the container walls also conduct heat, and because the efficiency of the cooling cycle decreases the larger the temperature difference between the inside and outside. This means for all practical purposes, your freezer has a minimum temperature that it can reach. It's the same with those heat pumps just that they have a maximum temperature that they can reach and the larger the temperature difference you want to have, the less well they'll work. With the heat pumps that have been on the market so far, it's been really difficult to reach temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius, especially in the winter. Now you might say you don't want your room at 50 Celsius anyway, and I hear you, but the typical water cycle heating that most houses have with fairly small heating elements use temperatures between 50 and 90 degrees Celsius. That's because if the heating elements are small, you need them to be really hot. You can make do with lower temperatures if you heat larger areas instead. This is why heat pumps are often used together with floor heating. That way the temperature doesn't have to be that high. But the floor heatings themselves are expensive and then the insulation of your house also matters for them to work well. I believe these are the major reasons why in some countries heat pumps have been slow to catch on. They work well in new houses, but many old houses are not well insulated enough for those pumps to indeed heat them. If you walk through a typical residential street in the UK, for example, you'll see lots of brick houses. 
houses, many of them with wood-framed windows. A heat pump just won't get them warm, and they're a nightmare to insulate. Even if you insulate them, that causes other problems, for example with humidity. I suppose that's why the infamous British-born activist group Extinction Rebellion now has a splinter group which calls itself insulate Britain. I really admire the change of direction there. They went from raging against human extinction right to, excuse me, is it possible that we could get some state aid to retrofit our brick walls? The issue with old houses in Germany isn't quite so pressing because a lot of those were bombed down during the Second World War. However, heat pumps aren't popular here for other reasons. The first is that they're expensive even with the support you get from the government. And that electricity is also expensive in Germany. Also, heat pumps make noise because you need to, well, run that pump. And then there's the issue that most house owners know that heating trends come and go. And I guess they figure they'll just sit it out. At least that's what I was thinking. However, it doesn't look like the heat pump trend is going away. Rather, it's just getting started. The reason is that a new generation of heat pumps has just come on the market and they really make a difference. They use a new refrigerant, that's the stuff which transports the heat, called R290, which is a type of propane. This much increases heat pump efficiency. These new heat pumps reportedly reach temperatures up to 7 degrees Celsius, which is comparable to what your oil or gas heating delivers. Even better, the R290 refrigerant is one that doesn't damage the ozone layer when it escapes. The idea itself is not new, it's been around for years, but it wasn't until last year that it hit the consumer market big time. Lots of companies are now selling the new heat pumps. Mitsubishi, for example, has declared R290 the future of home heating, LG agrees. Panasonic is on it too. These things are all over the place. The praise of R290 is pretty much universal. I've tried to dig up criticism, but the only thing I found is that R290 is extremely flammable, which is not great, seeing that the most common problem with heat pumps is that they leak. Then again, these pumps don't contain a huge lot of the stuff, so I guess the risk is tolerable. That said, using propane doesn't remove the problem that heat pumps need more energy the higher the temperature difference you want them to create. This means that while you could use the new heat pumps to reach water temperatures above 70 degrees Celsius, the relevant question is whether that's any better than just heating with electricity. I guess we'll find out soon. The potential of these heat pumps is huge. A recent study found that in the United States alone, heat pumps could save between one and two thirds of carbon emissions from the residential sector. That's between five and nine percent of the national emissions. That's a big chunk. So I think that's a good development and it could make a real difference in principle. In practice, the company which owns our house isn't even fixing our half broken oil heating. So I don't think we'll see any heat pump here soon. I hope that Insulate Britain is doing better than that. It can be difficult to make sense of the news you find online, but I found ground news to be a great time saver. Let me show you how it works with an example about the UK's recent plans to build new nuclear power plants. On ground news, you find all articles on the topic collected in one place. It will tell you what the talking points are on the left and right, that the coverage leans somewhat to the left, and what the factuality of the articles is. It tells you who owns the media outlets and where the news has been covered. You have it all at one glance. Ground News also has this cool feature, which they call Blind Spot. It shows you news which have been covered almost exclusively by one side of the political spectrum and has been ignored by the other. This is especially useful now that the United States is heading towards election season. Ground News is supported by its subscribers and offers plans for as little as one dollar per month month to keep it widely accessible. I support Ground News because I think it's a simple yet effective way to be well informed and I recommend you head over to give it a try yourself. And of course I have a special offer. If you use my link ground.news slash Sabina you'll get 40% off their unlimited access Vantage plan for less than five dollars a month. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you'll find it useful. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.